I want to welcome you today to the Thursday podcast of the Prodigal Son. You know, I've got an outstanding, an outstanding message from God today. And, and I just want to I thank Him for giving me what He has given me in this Scripture. Oh, I thank God for, for the enlightenment, the wisdom, the grace and the mercy, and most of all, the love that He has shown mankind through His Word. My prayers come out of Paul's prayers for the Ephesians. Ephesians 1.15 says, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called, his holy people, who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. Ephesians 3.14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And you may have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep His love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able, through His mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, I thank God that he has opened my eyes to his love. And I earnestly pray for you today that he opens your eyes to that love and that mercy, that grace and that goodness. Oh, just how much he loves you today. Glory to God. Let's see what God's word has to say today. Father, I thank you and I praise you for your word. Lord, it thrills me to, to read your word and, 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 and come to know and understand that this word is written to me for me and about me and and you're no respecter of person that it's written about the entire world population. Lord, I thank you for your love and your mercy, and I, and I pray that you would touch each and every heart that listens to this podcast today, that they might come to understand that, they, that you love them too, just as much as you love the most innocent child that's here on this earth. Lord, I thank you, and I praise you. In Jesus' holy name I pray, amen. I'm going to be taking my scriptures today out of Psalms, the eighth chapter. And I, I read it in the King James, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it to you in the, in the New Living and the Amplified Version also. But starting out with the King James Version, it says, When I consider thy heavens, the works of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man, that thou art mindful of him, the son of man, which that thou visitest him. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou hast madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. Now I've got a I've got a statement to make today. And it is this is who man is. Do you understand how important you are? 
Do you understand how important mankind is to God? The the New Living Translation for Psalms 8, 3 through 6, it says, When I look at the night sky and see the works of thy fingers, the moon and the stars you set in place, what are mere mortals that we should think about them, human beings that you should care for them. Yet you made them only a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You gave them charge over everything you made, putting them all, putting all things under their authority. That's the New Living Translation. Let's look, let's let's uh, uh, read the Amplified version. It says, when I view and consider your heavens, the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have ordained and established, what is man that thou art mindful of him, the son of an earthborn man that you care for him? Yet you have made him a little lower than God or heavenly beings, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under your feet, under his feet, excuse me. And I I just, I want to talk to you today about just how important you are to God. And, And what are, we are important to God. I want you to understand that. I want you to see that. I want you to see and understand that that there's nothing in this universe more important than we are to God. He, he, he created this world that we live in, the universe that we live in. But most of all, he created this world and put it in perfect order to sustain life. And instead of him having it and using it and, and doing as he pleased with it, He created mankind and put us here on this earth. And Genesis 1.26 says, and gave us dominion over all the earth. And that is control, just like the the fifth and uh, sixth chapters talking about. He gave us dominion over the works of his hands and, 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 and gave us full control of it to do as we pleased, made us free moral agents to serve him, or to not serve him. But I want to talk to you today about how important you are to God. If you weren't important to him, he wouldn't, he wouldn't have went to all this trouble. I, I, I talked about it here a day or so ago. I don't remember what day it was, but talking about that Jesus stands at the door and knocks. You've got the creator of the world knocking on your heart's door, on your life, wanting to be a part of your life, wanting to be the, a very important part of your life. I don't think mankind understands or realizes how important they are to God, how important they are to, to, to this whole thing we call life. God wants to, to be more than just a, a, a crutch. He wants to be more than just a, 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 a figure in, in our lives that we run to when trouble comes. No, he wants, to be, he wants to be that loving Father that comforts and cares and provides for each and every person that will allow him to. That's how important we are to him. That's how important we are to to his plan for this world. He wants us to live victorious, strength, strengthened, strong in this world. To to live as as we we were supposed to live on this earth with power and strength and grace and 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 the love that he has for us just 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 flowing out of us to uh, to everyone around us see that's what that's what the tool that that he wants uh, us to be used at as today 
is a tool that he can use to show his love and his mercy, his grace and his goodness. I'm going to, I'm going to promise you one thing, that's uh, something that I know with every fiber of my being, that there are multitude millions of people that walk this earth today that do not know what this book says about how important they are to God. They have a view of God that he's some crazy old bipolar old man with a hammer in one hand, a lightning bolt in the other, just waiting for them to screw up because that's all they have ever seen out of religion is is shame and condemnation and 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 some uh religious fanatic or some religious person that that is just just itching itching to to hurt them if they don't do what they 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 think they need to do that's not god that's just exactly what i said it was it was religion and 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 mankind has got eaten up with, I don't know, I guess it's just control of people's lives. Mankind has been so, so wound up in the religious rules and regulation of the old covenant that, that they, have, they have gotten to a place in their life that, that they want to in, in, in put, you know, imply this stuff or, 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 or put these laws and, and these do's and these don'ts uh, over on people and control them with it. Jesus Christ said it, said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart. He, first he says, come unto me all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I've said it over and over and over again on this podcast at the jail. Uh, everywhere I go, I tell them, if it ain't easy and it ain't light, it ain't God. God don't lead us by pressure and a, a pushing and a, you know, just a constant uh, struggle in life. That's the devil. Satan wants to, to rule you and, and push you to a place that all you can do is do what he says. That's what, that's what uh, it's, it's wickedness that wants to push and control and twist. God uh, deals with us through our spirit man, through that inner man. Elijah said it was that still, small voice that he heard. Wasn't in the all the commotion that was going on around him, all the things that could have brought fear to his life, but it was that still small voice. I I I just I I can't help but make this statement because I don't think people think of of God this way, but God respects us. You say, how in the world could he respect the mankind, mankind the way, way some of us act, the way we have acted at, at times in our lives? I don't know. I mean, I, I don't understand that, but he does. Without a shadow of a doubt, he respects our wishes. And he's gone, gone to a lot of trouble to, uh, to allow people to do just exactly what they want to do. But he's also gone to a lot of trouble to give us the strength, the guidance, the Holy Spirit to guide us and give us wisdom and strengthen us and, and, and give us his word to look to for guidance and understanding. And I just, I, I don't know how to put it in words the way I feel about the God of this universe that created everything is mindful of me, is mindful of you. People don't realize that. All they see in God is some, ty some tyrant, a tyrant that's out to, 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 to just slam them 
every time they get out of line. And I assure you, that ain't the image that God has painted of himself in his word. The image that God has painted of himself in in his word is the perfect image in Luke 15 of that father that that stood watching the horizon. That's the reason this podcast is called The Prodigal Son. Because I want you to come to realize and understand the picture that was painted in Luke fifteen eleven through 24 of that, that loving father that stood and watched for his son to come home is the picture, is a picture of God the Father waiting on us to turn to him and come to him. And that's the love that he's going to shed on us in every aspect of our lives if we'll just allow him to. Oh, he loves us. That's how important we are to God. That's who man is to God. And that is that is that being or that group of beings that that he he created and put here on this earth and give us everything we ever needed to live victoriously strong in him. He, he, he put it all here for us to enjoy. And, and somewhere along the line, religion has corrupted that, that vision, has corrupted that image that, that God has, has so beautifully painted of himself in his word. And that's, that's my job is to 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 help people see and understand the love that he has for them, the care that he has for them. I I heard a I heard Norval Hayes. He's no relation to me, but he's a a very important man in the in the uh, in the world. Or he was he was a an outstanding minister. And I heard I was watching him on YouTube the other day and. And uh, I can't. I, don't, I know I won't get it completely correct on the quote, but he was talking about uh, that that God loves us with all that's in Him, and 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 that's just uh, that sends cold chills all over me. And I know I'm not. I don't. I don't teach you to to go on your feelings, but that's something that that thrills me to know that God loves me with all that's in Him. That, that loves me more than life itself because he laid down his life and died on the cross for my sins and your sins. That's how important we are to him. I don't care where you're at, what you've done, the mistakes you have made. God is waiting on you to do like that prodigal son did. Whether you've been born again and just away from him, or whether you have have never been born again, he's waiting on you to turn to him. Come to him and give him your life. Confess him as Lord and Savior of your life. And you know what he'll do when, when, when you do that? He'll love you. He'll show you how much he loves you. He'll he'll give he'll he'll impart into you his Holy Spirit that will minister to you through the Word of God if you'll if you'll just listen. Just listen. Romans ten and nine said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Glory to God in the highest. I want you to understand this today. That's all it takes to be born again. That's all it takes to be, to be born into God's family. And, and, and for, for you to know that you have eternal life in God's kingdom through the blood of Jesus Christ. Be born again today. Find out what mankind is to God. And that's very important. He loves us with all his being. And that's a love that none of us will grasp 
until we see him face to face and understand the love that he has for us. God loves you. I don't care where you're at, what you mistakes you have made. I do not care what's going on in your life. I want you to understand and to know that God loves you. He cares for you. He wants you. He wants you more than anything in the world to turn to Him and give Him your life. Proclaim Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today. He wants to be that guide, that that loving Father, that help, that comforter, that strength that you've so desired your entire life and didn't know where to find it. Well, I'm here to tell you, find it today in Jesus Christ. Glory to God. If you're listening to this podcast, go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com. You know, it, it, it thrills me. It thrills me to know that God loves me with all that's in him. When I heard Norval Hayes say that the other night, it just, I mean, just wound my clock. Wow. The God of this universe, the God that created everything, loves me that much with everything that's in him. And you know, he loves you the same way. Oh, it thrills me to know that. It thrills me to know that I can proclaim his goodness with confidence that it's the truth. God's word is true above all opinion. Don't you ever forget it. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com. We want to hear from you. I want to hear what God is doing in your life. I want to hear what you need him to do in your life. I want to guide you and help you to find a church, to find a church in your area that you can that you can uh, get in and be fed and find out just how much God loves you. Glory to God in the highest. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. I want to take just a minute and thank all the partners. Partners, thank you. Thank you so much for all that you do for this for this podcast and this ministry. The, the, the finances that you, you sow into this ministry faithfully, for the prayers that you sow in 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 your time that 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 you that you 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 know you invest time in our in our ministry praying for us i appreciate that i thank god for that i pray mark 10 29 and 30 over you a hundredfold return on everything that you sow into his kingdom glory to god in the highest if you're not a partner of this ministry, pray about becoming a partner. Pray about becoming a partner to help us to, to sow God's word into this world, that it'll grow, that it will grow and, and be strong and become strong in other people, rather. You know, we, we as Christians, we find ourselves in places that, that we, you know, we can't get out of or our situations that we see no hope. Well, God is that hope. And his word holds the wisdom to strengthen that hope. You know, I heard Keith Moore say it one time. He said, a biblical hope is a confident expectation. Biblical hope is faith because biblical hope is confident that what God has said is true, and, he, and they're just waiting for it to manifest. They've already got it. They've just have, they just have—they hadn't seen it with their physical eyes yet. Pray about becoming a partner. Pray about sending, sending this word out to give people the, the confidence and the love and the mercy that, that, that God has given us through his word. Help people to know and understand what, what God is all about, and that is that he loves us. He cares for us. He wants more than anything to be part of our lives, and he has given his word to us for that purpose, to help us, to strengthen us, and to, to help us to overcome all that this world throws at us. Be a partner. Become a partner of this ministry today. 
and we want we want more than anything to to help people see that God's not a tyrant but a loving father. Go to our website, get in touch with us. It's the prodigalsoncom